What's up guys, Bar Barrett's Music here today. I know I look like I'm from Antarctica. That's because it's really cold outside in the south right now. And so I got my toboggan on as well as my big old jacket and thermal shirt and all this good stuff. But today I wanted to talk about numbers in music because numbers can get really confusing in music. So I just wanted to really kind of break down the different kind of contexts you can get with numbers in music because there's a lot of different numbers that relate to different things inside of music. And I feel like people who, you know, don't go to college and, and learn really deeply about music, all the numbers stuff can get really confusing. So let's talk about it. Really, the one of the first times you start to see numbers in music is something called intervals. And an interval is just the distance between whatever the bottom note is that you're playing, the lowest note, and then the next note above that. Also remember that interval is always only two notes, okay? So if you have one note that's not an interval, it needs a distance, it needs to go somewhere. So that's an interval because those are two notes. So we start to get numbers in music when we start to talk about intervals because it's a distance. The close, some of the closest distances are what we call seconds. And you can hear how those notes are right next to each other. It creates kind of a, what we call a dissonance. But that's a second. A third is the next one. A third is actually what chords are built out of, thirds. Then you have a fourth. So we start to get farther and farther apart. There's something called a sharp fourth. Tritone, a fifth, a fifth is considered to be one of the most consonant intervals, a sixth, a minor sixth, so you can hear the notes are constantly getting farther and farther apart, expanding really, seventh, seventh is really dissonant, unless you put it in a, in a context, like that, it makes it pretty, but if you just play it by itself, why? Because it really wants to go here. That's an octave. That's one note to the same. So C to C. Why does it only go up to seven and then eight? Well, that's because that's what your scale does. So second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. And we call it an octave. Oc eight. All right. So that's one of the first times you'll start to see numbers in music is intervals. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and octave. And it can go higher than that. You can get a ninth, which is really just a second, but an octave up. Uh, tenth, you know, eleventh, thirteenth, and so on. You, if you want it, those are called extended intervals, okay? So intervals are the distance between two notes. So in the next case, in the next context, you start to see numbers in music is what we call scale degrees. Now this is really something that's kind of uh, confusing to a lot of people, but you have to think of it in the context of a scale. So if you're talking about intervals, then don't, you know, you don't put numbers in two different contexts. You always know what context you're talking about when you talk about numbers in music. So if we're talking about scale degrees, we're talking about scales at that point. Scales are uh, different than intervals because intervals is a specific label uh, on a distance between two notes, whether it's short, a short distance, or a very big distance, okay? Um, that's, that's interval, but a scale degree has to do more with the fact that a scale, the whole point of a scale is that a scale either goes up or it goes down, it has a direction. Okay, so I went up that time. I went down that time keep going down or you can keep going up. That's the number one thing you have to remember about a scale. A scale has a direction. It goes from the root back to the root, back to the root. Okay, now there's different ways it can do that. You can have a major scale, which consists of major intervals, and you can have a minor scale. I messed up, but you get the point. So, when we talk about scale degrees, we're talking about scales. So in other words, your scale degrees would go with whatever's going on in the scale. So root would be the first scale degree. The second note of the scale would be the second scale degree. Now if you put those together, that's also a second interval. So the third scale degree of the scale, the fourth scale degree, the fifth scale degree, the sixth scale degree, the seventh scale degree, and then back to the first scale degree or the root. Now in this case, so 
It's kind of the same thing as intervals, but it's not because an interval is the distance between a root and where it's going, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and a scale degree is an exact degree of the scale. So if I play this note, I don't call that a third because it's a note. But if I'm talking about it in the context of a C major scale, it's the third scale degree in the key of C. Now I've been playing in C, but you can also do this in any key. So let's go to A. There's A major. Now here's the root, the first scale degree. B would be the second scale degree in A. C sharp would be the third scale degree. D would be the fourth scale degree. E would be the fifth scale degree. G sharp, sixth scale degree. And then your, uh, sorry, F sharp, sixth. G sharp, seventh scale degree. Back to A, which would be your root. Now, why are scale degrees important? Scale degrees are important because you're thinking of it more individually, note-wise, like melodies. So, um, you know, okay, that would be the third scale degree, the second scale degree, and the roots. So really, scale degrees are normally thought of as being more of a melodic kind of way of looking at music. Like she's singing the third scale degree of the scale. scale degree of whatever key you're in. Now say I go to a different chord. Uh, what about this? Now I can sing the third scale degree in that chord. So if I go to a different chord, I'm still going to be looking at this scale degree in C. So the scale degree would be, uh, in this case, it would be uh, a seventh actually, going back to the one. So you have intervals, which is a distance between two notes, and you have scale degrees, which is an exact note inside of a scale. So the third way you start to see numbers in music is chords. And this is the one you see most often. This is the whole, what people like to call the Nashville number system, although there really is no such thing. It's not the Nashville number system. It's just chords inside of a key or inside of a scale that work well together. In other words, it was around way before Nashville was around. It was around, you know, in the Baroque era, you know. It's just that it, it's sort of caught on that name. How does it work? Well, the C chord, okay? If we're, if we're in the key of C major, C, which at the bottom of that chord would be your root or your scale degree one, would be your one chord. C would be your one chord. See, here's the context. You need to say one chord. That's why, that's how the number can make sense. If you just said, that's one, that's okay, but it's not specific enough really in a, in a music theory atmosphere because there is so many different ways numbers can be used. So the one chord in the key of C is C. The four chord in the key of C is F. Now how all this relates is that the four chord is a fourth from the root interval wise and the fourth scale degree in the scale. It's also, if you play a chord on the fourth scale degree, you get the four chord, you see? So the C would be the one chord, the F would be the four chord, and the G would be the five chord. C, D, E, F, G, okay? So we're talking about, inter it's an interval, a fifth, it's a scale degree from the root, the fifth scale degree, one, two, three, four, five, and it can also be made into a chord. The five chord is what we would call it. That's what people were talking about. When they say one, four, five, they're talking about chords that are built out of a scale. Okay, so if you've ever heard someone say one, four, six, five, what you do is you find whatever key you're in. So if you're in the key of C, you go one, four, six, five. One would be your C, you go to your four, it would be F, six would be your A, and your five would be a G. So you build chords out of each one of those. One, four, F, six, five. Now this works in other keys also, duh. I'll say you go to the key of G major. You just have to memorize the F sharp is in the key of G major. So uh, you would have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So the intervals would be second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, C, 
seventh is the F sharp, and then G would be the octave. So the second scale degree would be A, which you can build a chord out of, A minor chord. The third scale degree would be B, you can build a B minor chord. The fourth scale degree would be C, because G, A, B, C, four chord, okay? The fifth scale degree would be D, G, A, B, C, D, and then the sixth scale degree would be E minor, G, A, B, C, D, E, all right? You have to memorize the F sharp is the seventh scale degree in G, and then back to G. See, in this case, G is the one chord. So it all depends on what key you're in. Before I was in the key of C, which makes C the one chord, the first scale degree, the root. If I go to G, now G is the one chord, the first scale degree, the root. So everything changes depending on what key you're in. Now sometimes the song can modulate, which means it changes keys, <laughs> which changes the one chord or the four chord or the five chord. So those are the different ways that numbers can be used, especially inside of harmony as well as melody. You have intervals, you have scale degrees, and you have chords that can be named and built out of those scale degrees. The four chord, the five chord, the six chord. But it all depends on what key you're in for what body of notes work well together that you're working with. Now, obviously, the other way the numbers can be applied in music is rhythm, how long a note lasts. So a whole note is four beats, one, two, three, four. So I can play my one chord as a whole note, one, two, three, four. I can play my four chord as what's called a half note, that's two beats, one, two. And I need another chord, G, one, two, which is your five chord, okay? So I'm using all kinds of numbers, but it's all in different contexts. If I'm counting, I'm thinking of measures and I'm thinking of how beats work inside of music. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, whole note followed by two half notes. If I have quarter notes, that's what you normally hear in music where it follows the pulse. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Oh Lord mercy. Sorry about that chord progression. Alright, so one. Oh, it's, it's major. That's why I'm freaking out. Three, scale degrees. Root is your first scale degree, and then here's your intervals, third, fifth, you know, so it all goes together at the end of the day. Um, so there's just some ways, some of the main ways we think of numbers in different contexts in, in, inside of music. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of music theory, kind of uh, numbers and music lesson here. I'll see you on the next one.